Every life we have some trouble But when you worry you make it double Don't worry Be happy Don't worry, be happy Three, two, one, zero Hey you! Yeah, you! Come here for a minute! I wanna talk to you! <laughs> Mama says you're brain dead, bang your head against the wall. Can't find peace of mind, brain needs an overhaul. The views expressed on this broadcast of the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show are those of the co-host and guest and do not necessarily reflect those of our affiliates. The topics and opinions on today's show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice. Take 12 Radio is not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here's your host, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, The Monty Man. I wouldn't lie to you, baby. Good guys, bad boys, we're all the same. Saved by grace is the name of the game. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay your burden down. That's right, it is time to lay your burden down. Every time we play that, Tony just cracks up. The man. <laughs> the myth. <laughs> the legend. The legend. Bruce's face was amazing, though. Yeah. I thought, well, we won't have to you listen to Monty sing about coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm getting this one down. I may sing, <laughs> sing along with this from the very beginning next week. Who knows? I've heard yeah. good vibes about it, though, from some of the listeners. They like the new Did song. They, do they yeah. like the new song? Yeah. Burden Down. Burden Down by the Allies. Well, we, we'll come we had Marvin here with the guitar, and he <gasps> could play the song yeah. with the guitar. Silent. Marv could play... Along with the guitar, while you sing the opening. He, he, ah, live show. I think people would much rather listen to Mark play the guitar than me sing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I've never I heard Mark play the guitar. The, yeah. I know. Yeah. Marv's good. <clears throat> I know. I've been. I've been waiting. And speaking of Marv, Marv is here. Hi, Marv. Hi. Bruce is back. Bruce hey. is back. He slept in last week. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony is here. Good morning. Welcome to the Take 12 Recovery Radio Show. It is time to lay your burden down. We're going to be talking about one of the things that that contributes to us carrying a burden around with us, and that is future tripping, the art of worry. Mm. And uh, that is going to be our topic uh, for this week. Uh, listen, uh, here's uh, Webster's definition uh, of worry, mental distress or agitation resulting from concern, usually for something impending or anticipated. This can be real or imagined. So we're going to repeat that Ooh. here in a few minutes, but uh, that's Webster's definition of, of uh, worrying. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today. Welcome to the show, everybody. I know. Right? The gang is back. The gang is back. Yes. Listen, uh, our email address, again, right now is M-O-N-T-Y-M-E-Y-E-R at Comcast.net. We're still having trouble with our Take 12 radio email. I was on the phone early this morning um, trying to get that resolved. So hopefully by what next week it will be. Oh, they never have anything to say. <laughs> they go, they go, ah, you know. It's I, your fault. Uh, sir, we don't uh, we don't understand your English. <laughs> I said, I don't understand your English. I don't understand. I go, excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Did you press four, three, or two? <laughs> don't understand your English, sir. <laughs> so can you call back? <coughs> oh and not God. after I've been on hold for the last 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> that was a good one. Time to lay your internet server down permanently. CenturyLink. Oh, CenturyLink. <gasps> I love them. Oh, they're horrible. No. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I saved $80. 
<laughs> where's, where's the eighty dollars? Okay, so listeners, maybe you can help with this. When, 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 when she saved it by not getting it. <laughs> when somebody comes home and no. says, somebody comes home and says, I went to the store, and, you know, and I bought this item, and I saved eighty dollars. <throat> Ask them to show you the eighty dollars they saved. Because chances are they didn't save eighty; they spent forty or whatever it is. So my wife comes home one day and says, "I saved eighty dollars on these shoes." <coughs> well, where's the eighty dollars? What it's do you mean? Where's the bank account? You mean you spent forty dollars? No, but if but see, that's my problem. If you don't have eighty dollars in your bank account, if you only had forty, you didn't save eighty; you spent no, forty. No, because it's discounted. Doesn't matter. Where's it's on the, sale. I want to know where the money is you save. So when you see something on sale, you're like, oh, I hope I have that, you know, 15, 20% of my bank account. But what if is you that don't? your first thought? No. Because so most if I of see it, I'm saving $80, then it's staying in the bank account. Most people, though, you live guys paycheck aren't... to paycheck. <laughs> I, I, I think you guys are worrying <laughs> about this. <laughs> Like, <laughs> so if I go to the store and I see something for forty bucks, it was eighty bucks, and I'm going, "Wow, that's fifty percent off, right?" My dad's gonna like you. Okay, for, that's fifty yeah. percent off. But all I have is forty dollars, so I go, "That's good news. I can buy it." So I spend forty dollars. Now I have zero in my bank account, and I go home and I go, "Look, honey, I saved eighty dollars." Or I say forty dollars because it was fifty percent off. I agree with Marsha. And, and she goes, uh, "I'm doing the same the thing bucks? to you that I." <laughs> my dad is probably going to do the same thing. I too. did to my wonderful wife. That's just, I have to turn that conversation you just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha, I agree with you. Hmm. His logic is scary sometimes. I know. I got told my daughter-in-law told me that the other day. She says your logic scares me. Oh, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like. What about is lo- about logic scares A plus B equals C. How how hard is that to? Why are you fearful because math of that? sucks. You, you're you're they're convinced of it. See, so I got a backward sweater. I'll tell you why my logic. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's wearing a backward sweater. I tell you, I'm telling you why my, my logic scares people. It's because I'm right and they don't want to face the truth. Oh. That's why my logic that's ego driven right that's, there. That's where Danny would argue with you. See because. She figures her out logic. But is Danny's right. in heaven now, and she knows I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> a, a plus B doesn't equal C. Yeah, yeah. it equals AB. AB, <laughs> AB, baby. So you, you guys ought to see the sweater that that Tony's wearing. She calls it her straight jacket sweater. The buttons are in the back. It drove Bruce but, crazy too. But aren't most blouses that women wear the zippers in the back, right? No, I don't buy those. Said they're annoying. But but, but isn't that are. the case though? I mean, most of the time, will, the nice. Will you zip up my back, please, honey? You know, well, they, yeah. You can't there are it. those. Out Why there. would a person buy? I don't know something where they couldn't reach the <laughs> zipper. They have a little contraption. They saved though. eighty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't know. I can't know what. I mean, can you imagine a man buying a, some Levi's with the zipper in the rear end? <gasps> they have pants like that. No. Yes. Way. It was more like a '90s trend, but it's slowly coming back, and you can reach those. I'm it's glad I was like, passed out during that. Time. No, it was a girl thing. Oh. Yeah. Which was they, scary, they though, because it. it's easily... Which rigged. is... But if it's a girl thing, it's probably a guy thing today. This is... No, skinny jeans is a thing that needs to go away with guys wearing them. Thank you. Oh, my God. They don't do you Buttons any favors. Buttons on the back make more sense than guys in skinny jeans. Don't ever do skinny jeans. I will kill you. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> See, Marv could pull it off, probably. Don't worry. Don't do it. Be, so you know who sings that song? Robin Williams. No. <laughs> He doesn't? Don't worry, be happy? Yeah. That's Bob Marley. Who? Bob Marley. Oh, I thought Robert. The doper of dopers. <laughs> I did really think The Robert. dreadlock of dreadlocks. <laughs> Robert Marley. Yeah. No, obviously I don't. Oh, boy. <laughs> Robert Williams sing it. Okay. All right, so uh, here's... Uh, we only have one story in the stupid uh, criminal news this week. Uh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I can get through this one. Uh, in the city of Fairfield, California, I mean, I was adopted in the city of Fairfield, California. Wow. Just point of information. Everybody, you guys know where it is? 
It's like um, have Bear we, City. It's kind of between. That's where it's at. San Francisco and Sacramento. Oh, okay. Kind of in between there, outside of Vacaville. <laughs> um, in the on the other on the uh, north side of Stockton, Ria Vista. Ringing any bells? Any listeners? Stockton does. Stockton, yeah. Uh, on the southeastern side of Napa. Are you talking about Idaho? Talking about Fairfield, California. <laughs> <laughs> what? Isn't there a Napa? <laughs> Travis Air Force Base, Susun City. Walter would probably uh, know all these okay. names. <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> What did I put in my coffee? Well, wait until you hear. Wait wait until you hear what happened in poor Fairfield. In the city of Fairfield, California, a man dressed only in a ski mask, a gun, and a gun holster around his waist. (laughs) Are you you envisioning this now? Um, So he was wearing a holster and a gun and a ski mask. That's it. Uh, No shoes, no socks or anything else. Um, Anyway, he attempted to hold up a convenience store, but failed (laughs) when he couldn't retrieve his gun from the holster. (gasps) Evidently it was stuck. Where? Now I just where was it stuck? Well, (laughs) that was your thought too. (laughs) Coming from the cowboy. Marv is just cracking up. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> it was in the holster, you guys. All right, all right. But it gets better. What was in the holster? The gun. The burrito. <laughs> the meth that burrito. Was five shows ago. Okay, a customer who was witnessing the incident happened to be a nurse who had recently assisted the local medical center in removing a man's private parts that had also <gasps> gotten stuck in a bottle of whiskey a few nights before. Uh, why? Okay, so a man's private parts <coughs> had oh, been inserted okay. into a bottle of whiskey, and oh. this nurse had oh, removed yeah. it. Okay. She recognized the hold-up <gasps> man's you-know-what. <gasps> recognized, <laughs> recognized his you-know-what as the same one she had removed Ooh. just three evenings prior from the whiskey bottle. And therefore, was able to identify the would-be robber. And later that evening, the gentleman was arrested and lodged in the Solano County Jail for attempted robbery, attempted assault, and (laughs) indecent exposure. (laughs) The woman should have been awarded for her gifts of observation and memory recall. (laughs) Well. So can you imagine you go to the convenience store to buy, you know, some (laughs) Pop-Tarts? buy pop tarts in the singular pack and maybe an energy drink <coughs> or something or a corn dog <laughs> that just sounded wrong <laughs> and you're up at the counter you're coming up to the counter and here's this naked man trying to pull a gun out of his holster oh i would die laughing and you look down and you go i know you <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the question that oh. comes to mind i will keep in my head oh like, my uh, word <laughs> First lot bad thoughts. What yeah. is going down? <laughs> well, obviously not whiskey and guns. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Guns He's... and roses. Yes, Bruce. <laughs> he wants to. He wants to. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't imagine what's happening. I, I... If you're gonna rob, I just, I just, you know, if you're gonna rob a convenience store, wouldn't you dress appropriately? I, you're damn right, you. Would. <laughs> <laughs> I'll loan in my sweater. Oh, God. Uh, God. This is the world of addiction, folks. <laughs> oh my God. That was the best moment. How how are you going to follow all this up? (laughs) Talking about worry. Listen to this crowd. You know what I mean? Uh, The king is back. So if you have a story uh, (laughs) that you think is uh, airworthy, (laughs) I'm not sure if that one was. Um, go no, ahead. That was what it was. For now, send it into M O N T Y M E Y E R at Comcast.net. Oh, my Monty face Meyer hurts. Comcast.net. <laughs> 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 
people are laughing. Um. Anyway, uh, so, uh, <coughs> so isn't it going to be interesting? You know, maybe fifteen years down the road, when when a sponsor tells his sponsor, <laughs> well, let me tell you a story about what I did. <laughs> well, we have done strange things. Yeah. I, I'd not. I would not oh, do that. Oh, gee. This okay. guy. This guy doubled up, though. Uh mm-hmm. huh. He did. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still trying to. I'm. I have to say this. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out the whiskey bottle. I know. Me too. <laughs> well, he must not That's have been just, that endowed. Well, I mean, I mean, that'd be downright painful. Yeah. <laughs> It was a wide mouth whiskey bottle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a whole new emphasis so, on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have even mentioned <laughs> it, but I mean, I just can't imagine that. Yeah. yeah. What's going down, man? You yeah. know, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, listen, uh, if you're going to do drugs, you may want to be careful on the strength of the dosage. I, I don't know. But anyway, the guy's in jail. And, <laughs> that was uh, the best ever. And the nurse is having nightmares. And, can you <laughs> that imagine poor the nurse. Cl- can you imagine I know. The clerk, can you imagine the clerk going, seriously, dude? See, now I'm going to have to ask my sister, who is a nurse, how they would do... Ex- 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 Removal? Yeah. Break, break the bottle. Oh, Lord. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, Robin. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah. Oh, I, that, I think that's what you do. You just... That's what I would tap do. Tap it and break it. If he's dumb enough to put it in there, he's got it. No, a... you don't tap it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh you're God. you're you're gonna really <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna really hit that thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh my God! There is no. Give me a break here, you know. (laughs) Oh my! Oh Lord! You know I could follow that up, but I don't know if I should. So I'll tell you off air. (laughs) I want to. I want to know what brand the whiskey was. Was it like old Granddad? Was it Wild Turkey? Hopefully, it wasn't Black Velvet because I already have nightmares about that. Just looking at a bottle is just. Black velvet, if you please. Yeah, that was my choice. <laughs> oh, Could you imagine? I, I, the hole in there is not that big. All right. Uh, we better move <laughs> on. All right. Uh, we'll be right back. Listen to this. Well, don't go away. Turn around, hit the ground, time to lay a burden down. And now. Here's Pastor Johnny Baker for Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is for all of us because we've all been hurt. We've all hurt other people. We've all got things in our lives that keep us stuck and keep us frozen, things we wish we didn't deal with. And for many of us, we have these addiction issues that also just rob us of any joy or peace that we have in our life. The thing about Celebrate Recovery is that it's a biblical program and it's got eight principles that lead us from one place to the next place over one day at a time after one day at a time. So we begin where we realize that we're not God. We come out of denial. We face our fears. We face the problems that have keeping us stuck. We turn our lives over to Jesus. We do things like taking a moral inventory of our lives and we look at all the things that we've done have been done to us to help us come out of that. We talk to other people about what's happening. Then at the end, we serve other people because we believe that God uses our pain so that we can help other people when they go through pain. To locate Celebrate Recovery in your area, visit CelebrateRecovery.com. Okay, it's time for Take 12 Recovery Radio Trivia. (laughs) Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, take it away, the Monty Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Cecil. That's a THK sound I, effect opening Mon- theme at some movies. Monty, mm. uh, I I can't believe we're doing this because I thought we just went through trivia. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody went through something. <laughs> and I thought Cecil did a wonderful job, and I've been a little upset with him. Oh, oh. have you? <laughs> Why? His trivia. Oh. You would have liked but last week. I think this new opening. You like that? Yeah, oh, I love his mm. new you opening. Like that? Yeah, yeah, I think Cecil yeah. thought about that. Yeah, Cecil did. <clears throat> I want to know how to do that with my voice, though. 
Ouais, de moi. <rire> okay. okay. All right. Uh, in uh, in honor of the um, the show today, uh, 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 this is worry worry trivia <laughs> worry trivia. All right, you get uh, one, two, you get four in a bonus. Uh, here you go. Number one. Uh, in America, adults over the age of 50 worry about this health issue more than any other. Here are your choices. Alzheimer's, diabetes, or incontinence. A what? Incontinence. The, how would you explain that in a nice way? The alphabet? Way? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> like remembering the alphabet. Being able to go to the bathroom. Oh. Or not being able to no. hold going Ooh. to the bathroom. Ooh, I think that's it. Oh, wait. Bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, diabetes. <laughs> you say, Bruce says diabetes. What do you say, Marv? Alzheimer's, diabetes, or incontinence? Incontinence. <clears throat> you say they're... Uh, I'm just going to say that one because it's incontinence. Well, you and, you and Marv would be correct. It is incontinence. Sorry, Bruce. You get this appropriately. Well, I worry about it, but I didn't think the other people did. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't worry about Alzheimer's. My grandpa had Alzheimer's, but you're not going to remember it anyway. <clears throat> no, uh, if you I thought I was the it, only one. Yeah. Are you worrying about Alzheimer's? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two, out of these three cosmetic issues, which do preteen girls worry about the most? A, having to wear glasses, B, having to wear braces, or C, getting their ears pierced? Braces. Yeah, that's what I think, too. I was a teenage girl once. Braces. Braces? Well, you're all incorrect. What? Yeah. It's Don't actually, tell me it's glasses. It's actually getting their ears pierced. What? Oh, stop it. Yes. They're wrong. Yes. No, they're not yeah. wrong. They are wrong. No, they're not. I still haven't hit puberty yet. Oh, I you am. know what? They don't, they don't, they're all looking for it. You had to get that done. Yeah, did, see. Did you, did, 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 did you yeah, notice what, what is. Meant. We, we, we so what, what do you think is driving that? Fashion. You bet. And ego and fashion and keeping up with, mm-hmm. you know. Trends. Janet next door and don't you know my friends get it done. And Everybody. Oh. Self, self-centeredness. It's yeah. self-centeredness. You bet. Yeah. Yeah, um, very right. good. How do we start young? Let's We're see here. <laughs> selfish people. Out of the three issues regarding sports, which of, which of the three do preteen boys worry about the most? Here are your choices. A, being too heavy to play sports. B, being too thin to play sports. Or C, being picked last for school sports teams. Aww. C. Yeah. C, be, being picked last? I always, always pick last. So you're going to pick but C I'm not, one? Well, I boys. think it would have to be C because you got A and, I mean, a and B are yeah. the same. They zero each other up. So you all say C? Yeah. yeah. Yep, you're correct. It is worrying about being picked last. You missed up, Cecil. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Cecil. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I was, reading, I was reading further on that, and it is extremely traumatic. It is. Yeah, extremely mm-hmm. traumatic. Um, okay, here's the next one. Which of these parental responsibilities do the majority of parents worry about the most? A, the birds and the bees talk. Ooh. B, teaching their kids how to drive. Or C, talking to their kids about drugs. Oh, that's hard. Awesome. Is it the sex talk? Because I'm in the addiction world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I I, I think they worry more about... Uh, uh, talk to them about the drugs, drugs and being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Parents. Okay. What do you think, Marv? Birds and the bees. Well, you're all incorrect. It's actually what? teaching their kids how to drive. They are freaked out over it. They freak out over it. Yeah, Kylie's dad did that. Thank God. Uh, yeah. That was my next pick anyway. It was so it? I don't feel uh, <laughs> <laughs> You want to change? <laughs> All right, so here's here's your bonus. You ready? Here we go. I like being blessed. Thirty three percent of people worry about this every day. Oh. Death, mm. money, or sleeping through the alarm. Death. Say, Bruce. Thirty three percent of people worry about this every day. Sleeping through the morning alarm, death or money. In the United States. 
No, I didn't say. <laughs> yes, you did. That, that you did say money. 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 What do you think there, Marv? 33% of people. Death money or sleeping through the morning well, alarm? Since it's 33%, I'm going to say sleeping through the alarm. Marv's oh. correct. It is oh. sleeping through the morning alarm. That is true. I'm da scared of that. Were you scared of that? I never worried about that. Yeah? I Why? just I just sleep through it. You just sleep through <laughs> it anyway, right? <laughs> All right, well, that is it for Take Troll Trivia for... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> this week. <laughs> oh my you did gosh! That. Oh, I know somebody else that's probably worried about. Well, I don't want to go. Back I'm to, worried about me. I don't want to go back to the guy in the porous community. There's store. something in the coffee. There is. That's why I didn't put creamer in it. You didn't put creamer in your coffee Not the today? second time around. Not the second time around. Mm. Oh, okay. Why? Do you suspect that the creamer no. has something in it? <laughs> no. I suspect that the <laughs> That's in why it. you do put it in the second time around. <laughs> All right. Uh, Webster's definition of worry is mental distress or agitation resulting from concern, usually for something impending or anticipated. This can be real or imagined. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So, um, what's, what, is, what does it mean when something <coughs> is impending? Mm. Well, coming you, coming yeah. down the road. Yeah. yeah. Coming down the road. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's coming down the road. What's it, uh, you know, I mean, you, you know, you, you kind of know it's, it's on its way. Uh-huh. Right, and you're sweating it, um, but you know, but you do know, yeah, it is coming, so it's real. You know what is that? Oh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll have to wait on that. Uh, my my phone is. If anybody's got a smartphone and you turn off the do not disturb, or you turn on the do not disturb stuff, isn't it supposed not to disturb you? Uh, if you take it off, vibrate. I took you it have off to everything. double tap it. No, to I make don't it know. Go I, I'm worried about this. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let me do this and let me do that. <laughs> you see how that worked? I just slipped that in there. The Listeners have no idea what we're talking about. Um, all right, so impending in, in is, you know, you, you know, it's coming, you know. So uh, the boss says, I want to see you in the morning, <gasps> and you know yeah. because of some behavior that, you know, that you're getting ready to get canned. Yeah, you just know it um, because you know what has been leading up to it, blah, 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 and so you're sweating it, you're worrying. What about anticipated? Can that be real or imagined? No, nah, I think it's kind of played in your head what you make it. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd go with more of an imagine on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm anticipating something. I'm not necessarily <laughs> real sure about it. The thing about this, though, is a person's perception is their reality. And if you perceive it's real, it's pretty real. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why we have people do real or imagined uh, resentments. You betcha. <laughs> yeah. Because if true. it's an imagined offense and you got a resentment over it, you still got a resentment over it. It's real to you, brother. Yeah. So um, here's some things that happen, and we'll talk about these uh, that worry causes um, future tripping. It, number one, it makes you exhausted. Mm-hmm. It exhausts you. Uh, aside from the fact that your anxiety might be keeping you up at night, freaking out triggers your brain to release the hormone cortisol into your bloodstream this helpful chemical quickens your heartbeat, gives your brain more oxygen, and releases extra energy to help your body deal with the stress. Mm-hmm. But frequent stress can cause your brain to limit the amount of cortisol it sends into your bloodstream, which can make you feel like you're dragging butt all day, every day. That is so true. So future tripping and worrying on a regular basis can exhaust you. Ever feel that way? Oh, yeah. Can I use an example? Yeah, you bet. Like, okay, and I don't know if this fits or not, but this is just my perception of it. Like, before the divorce, I was just, like, so stressed out and everything. But now after, I have, like, I sleep without my sleeping aid, and it's just 
Because yeah. all the burden yeah. of all, all the, the burden the of everything paperwork, off. the and I, yeah. confrontations, like yeah. everything, you're not dealing with that mm-hmm. anymore. And now so. I'm more rested. Now you're more rested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can sleep yeah. at night. And I would say some were real, some imagined. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. yeah. Yeah, you bet. I won't. I won't. Mm-hmm. You ever get pooped out from worrying, Marv? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do horses worry, Mark? Yeah. No, the other part of that, too, um, is the uh, what if. Mm-hmm. Oh, the what ifs? Yeah. That, that's a oh, big yeah. deal. That's so we're not even necessarily <clears throat> anticipating or impending. Well, I mean, we're just we, questioning. We, we, we have uh, maybe something legitimate to worry about. But right. Then, uh-huh. But then here comes all these, well, what ifs? I'd have done this, or could I have done that, uh-huh. or whatever. Could have, would have, should have. And, and that uh, uh, impacts that also. Yeah. yeah. They talk about that in treatment, too, and it's like it, your brain can, like, play games. Like, Oh, yeah. When people say, Tony, I need to see you in the office, I automatically go back to bad Tony because I know I messed up, but now I know I don't mess up, and now I just, like, freak myself up. So sometimes – you know, Tony, please come to the office can mean you're getting a promotion. Yeah. But now it's... Is it because most of the time it's not that, that we think it's not that? I think most right. of the time, like, I would thought of, like, the bad stuff I used to do. So I was like, oh, God. Yeah. So I think it just yeah, takes a lot of Yeah, I think separate. that's a lot of it, too, is your past experience. past experience. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't think of the word. I love you. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um... Here's one that's really interesting about worrying. It messes with your libido. It's not a secret that when your mind is someplace else, it can be hard to get in the mood. Oh! But that's not the only way worry impacts us. Chronic stress can impact your body's production of estrogen, which keeps your reproductive system in working order. When that happens, you could feel a dip in your sex drive. So if you're worried and fretting and future tripping, sex drive's not going to be up to par. Yeah, the, the drive is there, but there's no key to start it. Ah, <laughs> good job. To sex, the yes. convenience store clerk. <laughs> Were you really? <laughs> well, yeah. um, ask the guy in California. Yeah, ask the guy in <laughs> Fairfield, California. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's worried. I'm sure he's worried now. <laughs> uh, it upsets your digestion. <coughs> Makes your tummy hurt. I agree with that. Those knots in your stomach could be more than just an uneasy feeling. Chronic worry can impact the hormones released by your thyroid glands, which re- regulate <clears throat> the metabolism, among other things. If these hormones get off track, it can lead to constipation. Yeah, that's where it affects me in my stomach. You, got you know, when I worry like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can, it can be painful. Mm. You know, in fact, I've experienced, I didn't even know I was worrying. I'm like, why have I got such a gut ache? And Marshall will say, well, are you worrying about, what are you worried about? And I think about it, I go, you're right. Mm-hmm. It's something knocking on my brain that probably I have no control over. And it's giving me a gut ache. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you ever, well, I talked about this like the last during the last show, ever pulled into a meeting and saw somebody's car, and you thought, "I don't want to go to that meeting. They're there, so I'm not going to go." And then you start feeling queasy and kind uh-huh. of that weird, you know, that's happened to me. And 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 you know, last week I said, and then you found out the guy's car broke down. He wasn't even <laughs> at the meeting. <laughs> it can also re-injure old like ulcers too. You yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, and like, ulcers are nasty things. Oh, yeah. I got one from my first marriage, and that just sounded awful. First marriage. Okay, anyways. Some people don't even know what an ulcer is. So, like, if it's a peptic ulcer, right, mm-hmm. it's a nerve that reaches the lining of your stomach, and it becomes raw. Mm-hmm. And then you can actually get a hole in your stomach. You can get a hole in your stomach mm-hmm. from it. Um, yeah, that's, that's not good. Um, it can make you break out. You can actually break out uh, when you're really freaking out. The level of sex hormones called androgenins in your body spike, causing acne to flare up. In addition to zits on your face, worry can also show up on other parts of your skin in the form of rashes. Mm. Um, that's because anxiety wrecks havoc on your immune system, which can make 
eczema act up or cause skin infections like staph. So I had a friend of mine years ago who had, he was a young guy, uh, still, <laughs> still in high school, and he had stolen some things from his place of employment. Ooh. And uh, he was a pretty spiritual guy, and it, it just ate him up. He couldn't handle it. And he called me up, and he goes, I did something bad, and I have to confess it to my boss. He, you know, can you help walk me through it? So I went to his place of employment where he was, mm -hmm. and the poor kid, he was light complected anyway. But he had these almost perfect square splotches all over his neck and under his, you know, where you sweat, oh, yeah. like his armpits. And stuff. Anywhere where there was moisture. He was broken out like crazy. Mm -hmm. Hives. Yeah. 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 He broke out in hives because because of what happens from, from worry. Um, here's one. It causes you to forget stuff. It can't, uh, You can't remember anything. Uh, traumatic worry, meaning, uh, meaning stress that occurs when you feel a threat to your life or a loved one's life and feels like intense fear or helplessness, seriously impacts your hippocampus area of your brain where your memories are stored. This kind of stress causes the hippocampus to actually shrink, making it tough to remember facts, lists, the entirety of an event, or long gaps of time from minutes or days. Plus, the damage from stress can make it hard to create new memories. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that one. So if I'm, pan if I'm panicking, I don't, I'm not thinking clearer. I can't remember where I put the pencil or where. Have you ever done that? Just a basic worry throughout the day. Have you, even you know, when you talk to people when they're stressed out like that, yeah. you can see where they're they're really not thinking clearly about yeah. something if it's, it's really on their mind like that. You bet. I think that's what they're talking about. I here. do too. You say, well, yeah. what exactly happened, Joe? I I don't know. I I just I, I'm just ah oh, I'm so worried. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in a rush. And had to get three or four things done at one time, just out of circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I'm stressing over it, and I'm worried about it, and I can't remember where I put my phone versus where I put the sheet of paper, where I got to do this, I got to do that, and I can't think. Mm -hmm. And it's those times you just got to stop, right, and just yeah. take a breath. Yeah. That's why we, you know, I'll, I'll try to give you an example of why I do something. I try to get people to understand <clears throat> And tell their selves about where they're coming from mm. instead of me telling them where mm. they're coming from. Right. Because they're in this state, you know, where they're so concerned, you know, about something being revealed. <coughs> right. You see what right. I mean? They're so worried about Especially it. Especially when you're working with them, like in the steps, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I can't get through that sometimes. So I guide them in a direction to where they actually, I point out where they're actually telling themselves. Mm hmm. Yeah. For the first time. You, and see, and they'll believe them, themselves. You bet. But you they bet. won't believe me. And actually, they're in, worried. Yeah. In, uh, in, in peer support training and in counseling, they call that motivational interviewing, where you're actually motivating them to, to actually come up with the answers. Yeah. Exactly. And, instead of you giving them to them. Mm -hmm. My sponsor does that all the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And I love her. It's very really helpful. better because you'll, you'll take notice of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons we do that, though. Not just the worry. See, and I can't do that. Oh, yeah. I'm bet. always like, what's wrong? <laughs> I mean, I just, some sponsors, like mine, she's just amazing. She yeah. gets crap out of me, and I try to do it with others, and I can't do it yet. Is she, is she the kind that looks you in the eye, and you just go, you melt, and you're like, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She doesn't have to say a word. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I've had people in my life like that. It's like, I don't want to run into them today. I may have to get honest. <laughs> You're going to like this one, uh, Tony. It okay. screws up your manicure. Oh, that's worrying. why I don't do my worrying. own manicure. Oh, so you'd rather worry than... Oh, you have somebody else do it? You're talking about nails, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have a nasty habit of picking or biting your cuticles, it might be how your anxiety is rearing its ugly head. I'm doing it right now. But yeah, I'm, you actually were, yeah. What are you worried about? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your finger's bleeding. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. I've done that. Yeah. And besides ruining your perfectly manicured tips, picking at your fingers can lead to a nasty infection since you use your hands for pretty much everything. 
Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I just had an epiphany. Did you? Yeah. Because yeah. I get these cracks right here. And right? then, yeah, you're right. Oh, dang it. See? So I knew a lady up in the Halsey area years ago who would bite her fingernails so severely from stress that they would bleed. They would bleed on a regular basis. Mm. And once she got some help for that, she found that it was actually a form of cutting. She was really? relieving some of her anxiety by creating pain in her fingers, uh -huh. which distracted her from the emotional pain she was going through from abuse. Mm -hmm. So it was like somebody that cuts themselves, you know. Um, but her, her stress and her worry level, that's where it, that's where it showed up. Mm -hmm. So again, just like alcohol and narcotics is an outward manifestation of an inward condition, mm -hmm. the problem really wasn't her biting her fingernails. Something else was going on. Yeah. And it was what she was stressing and future tripping over and, and worrying about. There was a condition in her heart, a heart condition, mm -hmm. that was causing this other stuff to manifest. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so it, it shows up in many ways. It makes you gain weight. Oh, God, yes. It R does. Right? Yeah. Does it make you gain weight without eating? Yes. No. Well, because it messes with the thyroid. The University of Kentucky study found that dieters who learned worry or stress management tactics were more successful in losing weight than dieters who didn't. The connection between reducing stress and losing weight could be that it helps cut back on stress-related binge eating. Mm -hmm. um, so can't. So that's as far as like binge eating. But can it cause you to gain weight if and not eat? I'm thinking maybe. Mm. Because you know when you starve yourself, you actually can gain weight? Yep. Because the body rebels. You see this in children in third world countries who, who are starving. They actually get bloated the stomachs. bloated stomachs, and yeah. They, they gain weight, but it's an improper gaining of the mm -hmm. weight. So probably, yeah. Now my wife, when, when she would worry, she would stop eating and she would lose <laughs> weight. Mm hmm um, and so if she, you know, if she started looking thin in the face, I mean, her family knew something was up. Mm. Me? <laughs> 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 well, Miss Golden Arches, if no. you, if you see me pulling through the drive through more than three times a day, you know, I'm stressing about something. Oh no. And no. And that's so true because, and I don't mean to keep bringing up the divorce, but it's the only thing that I can think of. I've sure. actually not even trying lots, 14 pounds since Walter left because I would binge eat out right. of stress. Sorry, they call it they the, call it love hunger, uh, where you're actually feeding. Yes, you're trying to feed to comfort mm. or, or or food comforting, and that's why they call it comfort foods. Isn't it interesting that the foods they call comfort foods are really really bad for you? Chips, that was mine. <laughs> Chips, processed foods, the gravies, the potatoes, the breads, mm. the buttery things. You know all the southern fried comfort foods. Oh, I love fried food. because. For a time, they actually do create comfort. Mm. The problem is, just like bad. a narcotic, it may work at the moment, but it will bite you in the blessed assurance eventually. And so we have heart disease and, and, and congestive heart failure and diabetes and you know intestinal issues and stuff surrounded around improper eating. We eat a lot of inflammatory foods, especially in this country. Mm. Most of all your processed foods are inflammatory. Mm. Um, and it's just sodium's but, outrageous in you know, processed foods too. Yeah, and and oh, soup. <gasps> oh my gosh! Look at the look at the amount of sodium, mm -hmm. and high salt actually comforts you for a time. But look at the amount of sodium in soup. Okay, have some soup. It's good for you when you're I, sick. I, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I went to my doctor the other day and. He, my A one C's were horrible. <clears throat> were they? Yeah. Yeah. So but you know why my diabetes was acting up? Soup. Really? Because of the sodium? Uh -huh. The amount of salt? Uh -huh. Because I you know, I wasn't eating anything, just eating soup. Uh, you know, like yeah. uh I was eating the uh, <coughs> um, noodle soup, noodle and chicken and Right, soup. right. But see I like it cold right out of the can. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. See, and I so, like pork and beans like that. So yes. that's that's yeah. what that's what I ate. Ew. 
seed, uh, mm. things like all the vegetables. I was other stuff. Where's your chart? Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that's a copy what, of it. That's what the doctor said to me. <laughs> You read these things? Called up the doctor, and the doctor said. He says, nothing out of a can, nothing out of a box. <laughs> and he says, you'll be all right. I said, what am I going to eat? He said, you ever heard of fresh vegetables? <laughs> yeah. So. You ever heard of? So, Marvel, Mar- 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 you're sitting around a campfire after a hard day of. Riding horses. Riding horses. What, what's your favorite thing to eat around the campfire? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like just about anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've seen him smile this much in one show. Pork. I love this. It's pork and beans, It man. is pork and beans. Do they really put the can of soup on the cast iron on the fire? Sure. Oh. Why not? We need to go have a barbecue at your house. I used to make, I used <laughs> to make, poached, I used to make poached eggs in a half, half a peel of orange peel. Stick it on the fire. Take the, the orange, scoop it out. Put it on the fire, put the egg in there. Oh, in the, the peel. Egg. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you just yeah. like orange peels. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can lose some hair. Yes. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce got a lot of hair. <laughs> uh, just as a spike in uh, and- androgens can cause your skin to break out, it can also cause your hair to shed more than usual. Usually three to six months after a super stressful situation, the hair will begin to drop from your scalp. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why Bruce has got so much hair. Maybe you don't worry as much as you think. Everybody thinks I diet. Really? To have so much hair? No. no There's a hair thing. diet? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's three. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'm they think my I coffee they think I color it. Oh, oh, dye it. Oh, t- <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> wow, I'm with you, Tony. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be there. <laughs> Did you put cream in your coffee? Um, <laughs> oh Lord! In a couple of weeks, Denver will be back with us. Oh yeah, and, I forgot. Uh, and uh, um, I forgot. Then, we're, then we're really gonna have a ball. Oh, I'm good tell Lord. You. We love you, Denver. What were you going to say, uh, Mark? That's neither here nor there. Right? Hair? Hair. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's okay. one bald guy to another. Um, hey, I think bald guys are hot. I think bald is beautiful. Well, honestly. Well, thank you. I think so. And I mean that. Just like I need my ego fed any more than it already is. <laughs> and like the hair diet. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Okay. Don't try to dye your hair when you have none. <laughs> it leaves stains. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're worried about that. You're like the guy with the gun. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Tony's having such a good coffee. time. She's uh, yeah, Her coffee went down the wrong pipe. Are we going to talk about any solutions? Yeah, we are. Okay. Right after this one. It makes okay. your back ache. <gasps> really? Uh, when you're worrying and stressing, your heart rate and blood pressure rise, and your body pumps out hormones to help with your fight or flight response. This combo can cause your muscles to tighten up and amplify the aches you get simply from normal daily activity. I also suffer from that. Yeah? Yeah, that one. Yeah? Yeah. Stress. Mm, my yeah. I hear you. Mm-hmm. So, what is. Now we're all like, our backs hurt. <laughs> Mind up. I mean, it I hurts. Know. So, what know. does God say about this stuff? Well, here's uh, the best place to look. I think is is the in, Bible in, in the holy holy writings of Scripture, Matthew six twenty five through twenty seven. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither soar, sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Mm-hmm. So what I get from That's that, beautiful. he says, yeah. therefore, That's I tell you. So when he says, therefore, he's saying, pay attention, because mm-hmm. this is a big deal. Do not be anxious. 
Now, Mm -hmm. God will not instruct you to do or do not something unless he gives you the ability to do or do not do it. That's Mm -hmm. the part I want to hear about. Yeah. (laughs) How How do you put that into practice? There you go. See, I think that that piece you're reading right there, mm-hmm. that 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 <coughs> now yeah. is is just wonderful to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, but to bring that into our minds takes practice. Oh, definitely. And time, and others mm-hmm. that are like minded. Yes, to help us. You know, in, into that situation and through it. That's what they mean about entering into people's lives and walking with them. It doesn't mean like just coming alongside of them, mm. you know, on one day and being nice. It's talking about entering into their lives and to yeah. to uh, care about what goes on. You mm. know what I mean? It, it right into the, all the troubles and all the good, you know, with a person. That's discipling one another. Yeah. So so let's read a couple more of these and then let's let's talk about the scripture verse that says how to do that. Because so many times uh, we have, you know, don't do this, don't do that, or do this and do this, and then nobody tells you how. Uh-huh. Well, well, that's all fine and good, but somebody give me some practical application. Um, so before we do that, here's Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, again, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is, this is where we get the whole idea of one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke twelve twenty five. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his or her own life? Mm-hmm. John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. That's my favorite one. So here's one. Don't look to the world for your peace because it will give you a peace. Mm -hmm. Because it says not as the world gives. So the world will give you some peace. There is things in the world that aren't bad that are peaceful, right? Mm -hmm. But this goes beyond that. This is the peace (coughs) that he gives. Uh, Psalms 121, 1 through 2. I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? From where does my help come? Him. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. First Corinthians ten thirteen. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Mm. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. Here again, he's providing it. Not a room full of 25 people drinking bad coffee. He's providing it, mm. okay, that you may be able to endure it. Uh, my favorite scripture of all time, Romans eight thirty one. What then shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, here's the practical application. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Mm-hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So I look at that, and I go, how do I do these things? Well, number one... Is, is and it takes practice, I stop depending on my own intellect mm-hmm. to give me peace. Number two, in all my ways, I acknowledge him. So in everything I do, in word and <coughs> deed, I'm acknowledging him. Does that mean, for me, sometimes I literally have to, in the morning, mm-hmm. I know this is going to sound corny, but I have to go through the motions of putting on the full armor of God. I actually, when I put my shoes on, I say, all right, Lord, these, this is the gospel of peace. When I put on my pants, because I don't wear a belt, I say, this is the belt of truth. When I put mm-hmm. on my shirt, I go, this is the shield of faith. When I put on my hat, because I have a hat, this is the helmet of salvation. And I go through these motions, at, and I don't do this every day, but there are times when I do it, I just, I do this, and it, it really, really helps. And in that, I am acknowledging him. I like that idea. See, that's that's what I that's call beautiful. whether you do that or you do something or else. Or do something else, right. Is learning to walk by faith. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and 
it takes practice doing those things. It does. But most people want us to try to change the circumstances or to understand them with our own intellect. And it gives us some peace. Yeah. Because, but it doesn't give us the peace of God. And even to receive him or to believe that he has left his peace with us. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what he said. My peace I give to you. You know? That to to really feel that it takes a building of faith. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to know that unless you practice that biblical principles. That this is what your faith is about. This is what you live, how you live, live your life. Yeah. And when you do that, then you enter into the peace of God. And and it's the peace that beyond you understanding, it's the peace that, that, Give you comfort in the middle of the storm, because not once, not once, does he say that he'll change the circumstance. Mm-hmm. Right, he'll just guide you through. Okay, it's what he does as he he brings that, and most of us really want that to go away. We're not asking for mm-hmm. this to go away. Yeah, we're asking for this horrible feeling that we have inside of us. Well, and yeah. when I lean on my own understanding, what I'm doing is I am <clears throat> facing the circumstance with my limited understanding, and mm-hmm. therefore, I tend to want it to change. Yeah. Now I say this, but see, I'm lousy at it. Oh, I, I I'm not it's, good at this either. Yeah. Well, well like, and I think people, after what Bruce just got yeah. through saying, I think it's important. Uh, in fact, I think it's mandatory <laughs> that that we make it clear because of where people are at in their lives and in the, in the recovery and all that, that uh, you don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to. Um, um, Master it? You don't have, to, yeah, you don't have to line up with anything mm. to do the things that Bruce was talking about because uh, of of our weaknesses, my right. my own weaknesses cause me not to be able to do and accomplish what Bruce is mm-hmm. talking about. That's right. Okay, <laughs> and and yeah. one of the things one of the things I've learned uh, most recently, and and uh, man, I I wish there was some way to get people to really know this for a fact. Mm. But our culture and our society yep. has become to the point where we're so performance-oriented mm-hmm. that people don't realize God accepts us just the way we are. Right. Not because of what we do or what we think we do. And it's so important. It was so important to me to get to a point where that was brought to my realization. Mm. You know, And the idea also, I can do nothing. I can do absolutely nothing without God. Mm-hmm. Amen. I can't do it. <laughs> Amen. And uh, but at the Amen, same brother. time, but at the same time, to realize that because of my weaknesses, mm-hmm. because of of this crap that goes on between my ears, God still loves me just the way I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can still go to Him, and I do not have to perform something. To make it okay, right? Yeah, right. And it's it's when we're when we are convinced that we have to, that we start beating ourselves up and throwing ourselves under the bus because we can't. Mm-hmm. And, and and believe me, uh, Monty, that is a real live struggle. Yeah, for it is. Lots and lots of people. Yeah. You and inc- I love, including me. You know, you read the Bible. There's nothing we can do. He loved us when we were yet his enemies. Right. He could do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and and he loved us when we were just sniveling, wanted our way, go the other direction away from him. Mm-hmm. He loved us then. So what makes us think we can do anything to make him love us, or anything to love us less? And well, the thing sure about it is, mm-hmm. the thing about it is. Is really you hear these evangelists, or you might hear in a church service, or anything like that, that we can come to God just the way we are. The reason we can is because God wants most of all to have a personal relationship with us. With us, 
Yeah. And there's some days that I don't even know what to say or pray about because I just I'm so overwhelmed with stuff. And all I can think about is saying is thy will not mine be done. And that's all I can say at that point. Well, and, and the Bible says he even understands our groanings. And mm-hmm. sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes it's ah. Oh! Well, sometimes words it, that the heart can't speak. Right. Yeah. yeah. I I bet. What Marv was talking about, you know, and what he was trying to put across to everybody in the audience just turns my clock. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why you heard me laughing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it just excites me. Mm-hmm. And a little bit, if I can say this, shut me up, Marv, if I get too far <laughs> into this, is I know a little bit about Marv mm-hmm. and what it took to get him back to this place mm-hmm. where he looks at things l- like this. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. It really takes a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you guys something. That's God working in our lives. Mm-hmm. See, we are going to go through tribulations. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. It's guaranteed. See? And it's for our benefit, but we don't know it when we're going through it. And that's what he's talking about. He, he won the race. He, he kept his eye, you know, on the goal. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's important. Mm-hmm. And I honestly think God brought you guys into my life to help me through the transition of everything that you've gone through. Yeah, yeah. because I, I, I was, cl- I, I said God, but I didn't really understand it. Like I thought I was still uh-huh. that person. But with you guys, you're like He still loves you, you know. Right. And I needed you guys in my life to realize that. So. And, and listen, a vessel cannot be filled up if it's full. Mm-hmm. And being emptied can be painful. Mm. Mm. It can be painful, but we have to be emptied. You know, because I come to God and God goes, you're so full of yourself. I, I have, there's no room for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was it you said this morning about building, what, is, what was it he said on the radio? About? We, we, was, we was in the car and I tried, was going to try to remember it. He's talking about I it. can't remember now. <laughs> My well, brain. it fit into this stressed? so well. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What he said. You know, it's funny, the the things you were reading. Yeah. I actually, on my 60, no, my 30 day my, after my last relapse, right. I have a child that we made at um, a treatment downtown. And uh, it says, today is, well, today is the tomorrow I worried about yesterday. And I oh, still right, have that title. Right. It's actually in my living right. room now. Right. Yeah. So I had to bring that up because I yeah. was just like with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, Matthew six thirty four. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow yeah. for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've always carried that saying throughout my there life. There was a, a really big lesson I learned about this and it was about the relapse, mm-hmm. you know, that we, we go through because, I was so hard on me when I lost that four years. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Okay, it was, it's just like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. And then had people laughing at me even. Right. You know, and when I yeah, go into the rooms. And, yeah, it intensified this feeling <laughs> I had. Yeah. You know, within yeah. me. And it really took a little while for me to realize it wasn't about all this worldly stuff around me and what was going on. It was inside. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. inside. <laughs> You see what I mean, and I realized that that uh, my peace and and what I was trying to strive for was, you know, what God had done for me. Mm-hmm. Amen. You know what I mean, and so that that started to diminish it mm-hmm. right away. And you know how where I got that from in this little thing we call the AA book, and it says when I put my hand in His that it, that my fear starts to go away immediately. It does. It starts to dissipate. And until you learn to do that, and it took me, you don't know all the, all the little things like that that built up. And no, and the, you're, yeah. The relapse, to, that come into my life to realize that that was true, and each person is different. They might travel a different road to put mm-hmm. their hand into the hand of God. And it's hard as a newcomer to actually comprehend any of this, because you're like, that's never going to happen. That's right. <laughs> yeah, which brings me to And the- like years later, I'm like, it does happen. Which brings me to the very last thing, and then we, then we have our song. But but uh, you know there are people that are worried about it, you know that that sobriety chip. How mm-hmm. in the heck am I? They see somebody get a year and they go, 
how in the heck is that ever going to happen? And then they turn around one day and they're there and people are clapping for him. They're Mm -hmm. getting their year. You know, I mean, I mean, to tell you, it happens. I I think he did that for I could help comfort others. Absolutely. And that's the hook that I tell the guys out at the Teen Challenge Center, the sobriety thing. You wanted the pain to stop. Mm -hmm. That was the hook. Yeah. Because in the first chapter of your first set of, of, of workbooks in their curriculum, mm-hmm. it says, all right, your friend from next door comes over and says, I'm not into this church stuff or this God stuff, but can you explain it to me? Mm-hmm. And then it says, put in your own words, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he oh, yeah. shall believe in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the third page in the very piece of curriculum they're helping somebody else. Exactly. The chips are not for them. It's no, for somebody it, else. It's help. And they go, whoa. They go, whoa, this really wasn't about me. It's about somebody <laughs> yep. else. I'm here to do God's work. The sobriety thing, that was the hook. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's amazing stuff. All right. Our, our closing song uh, is an acoustic piece that I came across. I just love it. It's called Heart Up to My Head, and it is by... David Ashley. Check this out. If you could open up my head, I know you'd find Chaos in the corners of my mind train of thought is racing down an old familiar track where it's hard to tell the truth from all the lies and imaginations have their pros and cons I've worried many times what might go wrong only then to realize That most of what I feared Was nothing more than fiction all along And if I say the Holy Ghost is in my heart And I rest on every word the Father says Then why is it I struggle to relate All of the faith that's in my heart up to my head And the crazy part is how I can decide To pursue a thought or brush it to the side There are ways to go about it But for me, the one that's right Is when I take each thought A prisoner to Christ Yeah, when I make each thought Obedient to Christ And if I say The Holy Ghost is in my heart And I rest on Every word the Father says And why is it I struggle to relay All of the faith that's in my heart up to my head All of the faith that's in my heart up to my head All of the faith that's in my heart up to my head Heart up to my head, David Ashley. If you'd like to hear more from David, please visit his Facebook page at Facebook forward slash David Ashley Music. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with the Take 12 Recovery Radio family, and we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. burden down.
down. This has been a broadcast of KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. She's a super cat, super cat. She's super kitty, meow. Yeah, kitty, 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 meow. Don't worry.